So the issue that we had was um, that um, we had a permission for the roles to assign roles to a user, um, which was kind of unused. Um, so the only permission that was actually ever checked when you were assigning any roles to a user was um, whether or not you could manage users. Um, so we have to split that out a little bit and um, what I've come up with is um, a, the idea of dynamic permissions, so delegation of um, which users you can manage. Because um, one of the scenarios, for example, is um, if you have a lot of front-end users, you might have someone in the office that you want to manage those front-end users, um, but you don't want them to be able to assign administrator roles to anybody and you don't want to give them the administrator role. Um, so what we have here I, is... I want to correct your phrasing or just maybe I'm wrong, but you say user delegation. It's more like a whole delegation. Um, well, it actually became kind of user delegation. So I'll show you some of the users on the system and show you what I mean, but maybe the terminology is, is wrong. So at the moment I'm logged in as an administrator, so um, I can manage and I have the, the administrator has the permission to manage users of all roles. Um, but if I log in as myself, um, then I've, this user Dean is in the editors group and I've given the editors group or the role permission to manage any other users in that role. So if I go to users here, instead of seeing all the users, I just see all the users that are in the editor's role and that are authenticated because they can manage authenticated and editors in this particular case. Um, so the way I decided to do it was that um, if you have permission to manage the user in that role, the user must be in only the roles that you have permissions to manage. So if I make a user that's an author and an editor, but I don't have permission so to manage authors. That's not how I saw that. I thought that what you meant is a user can manage the editor all, which means he can see all the users, but when he edits a user, can only check and uncheck the editor hole. Well, that was what we first talked about, and that was what I first did. Um, but I realized that it just wasn't kind of enough because if I was able to, and you can see that you can only see the editor roles here, like we just talked about. I see. So it's a second thing. It's okay now. I'm... So so it's on top of I, I I kind of did what we talked about, and I realized it just wasn't enough um, because in this case. If I was seeing all users, but I could only manage their some of their roles, I could also delete them. I could also disable their accounts, even though I'm, the the permission would only be about their roles. Um, so, but then, I so mean, what would be the just, point? You know, I can. I uh, mean, these properties should just be allowed by. I see. If they were allowed by admins, then you have to be admin to be able to disable user from all. So there are two levels, like set roles and then I see. It's two different things. I it is kind of two different things. And then the set roles became a bit irrelevant because really it became about actually managing users. So is it, is it opt-in like you could say that you can only manage roles? So when you edit a user, you can only check and check this role. And then the second permission, the role, which is manage users in the role, edit users in this role. So you, you could split it further. Um, 
it's it's not at the moment. Um, but what would you split? Um, because you could have the ability to delete them, enable them. That's what I mean by username. by manage user. There is manage role and manage user, and these two permissions are per role. So, but what would you be, then do with, say, their any custom user properties? What would, would they come under the managing roles permission it's or manage, manage user, user permission? Uh, manage role is already assign the assigner role. Manage user is manage the properties of a user. And then maybe there are other sub permissions that some modules could add, but that's not, that's the general one is edit user, manage user, and then manage roles. And these two are role dependent. That would be more obvious this way. This way you can even say, you can edit users in this role. You can't assign or remove this role because this person in this company is responsible to for the group contributors. So he can add and remove people from the group contributors. He can't, you see what I mean? He, and he can add or remove people from the group contributors or he can edit anyone from the group contributors. These are two different things. You can have the two of them, like add, remove, and edit all the properties of this group. But you can also say, I just can add or remove people. And you can also say, I can only edit the people from this group. Um, yeah, so if, if you think there's a use to split it out back into two, then I can I can bring the first bit back in, which was the, the role permissions bit. Okay. I, I um, think that's so great. we would end up with then. So you would have to manage users and roles, um, but we'd have to have a signing off. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. Like it, it's actually quite tricky to get it working um, because it's about what you list. Um, so the, the list here, the list here is manage users by role. That's it. That's the same thing as editing the properties. Yeah, so the list here is, is this, but as soon as you put a permission down here for managing the roles for administrator, need, actually, they to have to have it. this permission and and the second permission. Because without without this permission, they can't get they can't see these. Like they can't get to this like they, they can't get to the screen. These all the users. Like if we look at all the users here, you see how many are not showing because they're not in roles that are, you, that you're authenticated to. So one, so okay, so if you have only one permission for that is derived per role, then you could have an, another one which is not derived per role, which is called edit users or edit. Yeah, you see what I mean. This yeah. way, whether no, you so can see, possible. we can. So that would be easier. Like manage roles and manage user in roles. Meaning you so when you see manage, how do you how do you do that? You can see everyone. So you can add people in a role. Because if you want to do that, you need to be able to see everyone. That's why I think it's it's probably just one permission. I'm just not sure that there's anything to be gained from having two. I mean, if I can see the two different permissions, which is manage who is in a row and not in a row, and then edit the properties of the user who are in the role. For me, there are two different things. I think maybe the, the conflict here is the user's list that in the end, if you can add and remove people in roles, then you need to be able to see everyone. That probably is it, yeah. Because um, you have you really have to be able to see everyone if you're going to be able to assign somebody who's yes. not in that role. 
yes and no, because maybe it's a different permission, which is view or list users, and then you can define per role. And it can be list all users or list users in specific roles. And then you decide if someone can add or remove people in the editor uh, role, but you also decide who this person can see, like authenticated, non-authenticated contributors. If you just allow them to see contributors, then they can only add or remove people from the contributor role to the editor role. And then the third permission being, you can also edit the people in the editor role. So the view, the list of users is one permission. Setting the roles is another permission and editing people is another permission. Yeah, I thought we did number three. <laughs> Speak to this much. <laughs> um, this is, in my view, the best option. So you can do everything without too much complicating any logical steps. But cool. I don't think you would disagree with that. You just think about three different permissions to manage and three different providers and three different lists here. Um, yeah, I mean, the second permission for managing roles is already there. It just, I just um, stripped it out because it just didn't seem very useful. Um, but we can do a, a list users um, permission. Um, becomes a little, little trickier to make it. Oh, no, we can make it non-breaking. Um, cool, excellent. Do you um, agree with what you talked about? Or? Well, <laughs> yes and no, it kind of, it, it overcomplicates it. I need to understand the scenario. It's just that today, the admin has all the three permissions and we don't see that. It's, it's not obvious. Oh, well, if you have admin rights, you can create users, you can remove users, you can edit users, you can do everything. So you just need to find the correct set of default permissions then for everyone. And yeah. But then you can create a role that's called community manager. It's great that you can just manage your community. You can't manage everyone else from the internal company. Yeah, so it is about grouping as well. Um, because it's it's a useful a useful thing. Um, so yeah, I think if we split them into list or view, view list, um, it'll probably be list rather than view okay. because yeah. view would make no sense here. You know, there's it's no, just edit. Yeah, it, that's just edit. Um, now, we have a profile also, but that might, that might be a public profile at some point. So maybe view will make sense on the front end if the profile module, you know, has the we talked about it. I think we have an issue to be able to list a profile with a custom page on the front end. That might be a permission. I yeah. can view myself. Yeah. I can view other people. That might be a permission. I can view people in specific roles. Oh, great. This way you can expose the profiles of contributors, but not of admins or whatever. Yeah, and, and delegate authority to people to manage Groups or roles or yeah, whatever. So flexible. Cool.